there was one. One was all pervading in its own omnipresence. One existed before God, before time, before life and before death. One was the void and one was eternally lonely. In an explosion, a moment immeasurably infinite and infinitesimal, one split in half and the law of two was born. And in this timeless moment all time was born. One and two loved each other with a total passion, seeing in the other the perfection of themselves. Together they gave birth to every atom in the universe, male and female, positive and negative, God and creation, light and dark. One and two was all that existed. They existed for each other, locked in their own duality, in perfect balance and imperfect imbalance. Then from the void, was squeezed a third vector, which was neutral, holding one and two together and apart. It was the twilight between light and dark, the purpose between male and female, the third dimension. The number three allowed growth, evolution and change. One, two and three together created the now, the past, and the future, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen, the building blocks of the universe, doing, being and thinking. Number three was the tribute from the void to one and two, which it had created from its loneliness and its love. Eons of time in the future mankind would recognize the cosmic power and significance of three and build it into their religions, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, the Islamic three levels of faith. The third vector inherited the blueprint from the void. One of the three split into two and then there was born the law of four. These four chased each other in a circle of devotion, dry, wet, warm, cold, north, south, east and west. Seasons and cycles came to be. Between day and night there was dawn and dusk. The power of four can be seen in the Egyptian four-sided pyramid, in the four noble truths of Buddhism, the four directions and the four sacred colours of the Native Americans, the four winds of the Mahdi. In order for the universe to evolve further, the law of five was created. Five caused a torrent of new opportunity and the human was created in the image of the creator with five senses, five fingers on each hand and five energy centers. There was now an axis, a meaning to the wheel of repetition and growth. The number six then came into being, made up of two laws of three, macrocosm and microcosm, as above, so below, inner and outer, and the embryonic universe deepened and thickened. The law of seven represented the first stage of completion, a complete octave, and so was created the seven notes to the musical scale, seven days of the week, seven planets of the ancients, seven colors of the rainbow, these seven levels reached in seven stages from God to the moon, seven levels of creation. Eight came next, representing two cycles of the law of four. The Buddhist eightfold path, the Chinese eight immortals, the eight days of Hanukkah, two circles coming and going, the symbol of infinity. At nine, the creation was bound in gold and the outpouring of God stabilized. And from this stability, the ever-evolving creation moved upwards from octave to octave like the nine-month cycle in the womb. All the laws of the universe were created instantaneously, building on 
and intertwining with all that went before and after. The ray of creation was created in non-sequential time, creating an embryo eager to grow and engage in the opportunity of life. All within creation contained the blueprint of these natural laws, with unlimited freedom and versatility within their principles. On earth the laws are the song and expression of nature, and all that is created from and upon our great mother struggles to evolve and return to the source of its great and righteous arising. <laughs>